worst marathon ever. Hi, everybody. Welcome to That Gets My Goat and the Worst Marathon Ever with an H. Is it really going to be with an H? <laughs> it is again today. Okay. <laughs> so I, I was going to talk more about Comic-Con, but maybe we would want to switch it up this episode and talk about Comic-Con tomorrow. What uh, do, Is there anything you want to talk about? I want to talk about Comic-Con. Oh, uh, okay. Because <laughs> I didn't have a great time there. So I want you to tell me about how you had a great time there. It's like earlier today, you know, because I've been trying to not eat bad things for me, and there was all sorts of treats brought into work because it was somebody's birthday. And I was just like, ah, I wish I could eat those. And then I was joking with this guy. I was like, okay, you eat them for me, and I'll watch. Ah, I'll just be like, yeah, I'll describe it to me. I like to watch. Tell me how it tastes. Oh, the look on your face really must mean it's good. Ew. <laughs> well, the motorcyclist, he's found us. I don't know how, but he found us. Run for it, Marty! He followed us all the way here. So, yeah, tell me, uh, what, what were the high points? We, we talked a little of the low points last time around. Or ha- Do you have a, a, a particular format you want to do these things as? I don't. I should have prepared something, but... I just figured, okay, well, I'll start to talk, and if there's something you want to know, you'll ask, and and we'll see. I really enjoy the panels, and uh, I I probably got to see 12 panels or or more. It felt like I'd seen more this year than I'd seen any other time. For the first time, I went to Hall H three whole times, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And uh, because I would get there early so that I could see the thing that I really wanted to see, I would end up sitting through a couple of panels for things that I didn't care about. There was one, uh, the other day we were talking, the other day in our marathon we were talking about YA books. Uh Uh-huh. And there was a panel for this movie called Divergent that's based on a very successful series of YA books, which I guess I had vaguely heard of in the same way that... You know, somebody's reading Gone Girl, and you're like, oh, well, okay, I, I know what that is. I'm, I'm, I'm not read it, but I know what it is, kind of thing. But the audience was really excited about this, and then when I mentioned it to my sister, she's like, I love those books! They're making a movie! And uh, and so I, I imagine that they'll... Uh-oh. <laughs> Here it comes. Sprinklers. Yeah, maybe we should uh, walk a little further away. Okay, let's just walk right there. We'll just try and uh, keep going as we walk. Mm. Anyway, I, because we've talked about the fact that I don't read, Scored. but I see a lot of movies, the movie version, at least, of Divergent seems to be... It takes place in a future Chicago, where he's a, it's a walled city, and there are far fewer people there than there are there now. And there are five factions. You'd almost say, like, five gang five boroughs in new chicago or whatever you call it and each one has some emphasis something that the people in that group prize above all other things or it's there it's almost like a college and there's five majors you know what i mean Uh uh-huh there's the and, and anyway they all have really obscure book names like there's one that their emphasis is on helping others serving others healing others and that group is called Abdeg... I don't know what that group is called. <laughs> this is coming off well. Keep going. Yeah. So I, what's I the point of Why your, am I even talking about this? story about Divergent? Oh, no. Just people were excited about it. And, and my sister was excited about it. And I thought, oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. And uh, the Ender's Game panel was that same night. That's, that's what I had gotten, gone there to see was the Ender's Game panel. And the people around me were talking about... Ender's Game, the movie, and we're saying, I'm afraid that they've really done all that they can to make it look like the Hunger Games. And I was like, oh, really? Well, that's weird. Huh, in what way? And they're like, well, just the way that the kids are and the, 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 the games aspect of it and the fighting and, and, and you know, they're all teens. And, that. and I was like, oh, okay, well, that, you know, that's too bad. Because you hate it when something could stand on its own, but instead, let's make it into something that it's not, or let's make it Let's trick the audience. I talk about that all the time. We need to trick the audience into thinking 
that it's something else because we don't have enough confidence in our own material. Anyway, I didn't see anything even remotely Hunger Games-esque about Ender's Game. Nothing. Except for the the name game is in the title. Uh, but this divergent thing, I felt like they had done ev- they had contorted themselves to make it look like the Hunger Games. And, uh, you know, it's got the love triangle crap that I complained about the other day. And Well, if there's a love triangle in Ender's Game, then you know that they tried to make themselves like the Hunger Games. But uh, especially considering there's not even a love uh, line. What, do you, what would you call it? I guess that would be the point of this. A love interest? Straight, yeah, there's not a, even a love interest. I'm just taking, you know, the three sides off of the triangle and making it just a two-side thing. But you can't do that with a triangle. You have one side. Anyway, it seems like we did an Ender's Game episode. What the hell was that? My phone, sorry. Oh, okay. It beeped. <laughs> it's like third floor lingerie. Uh, it seems like we talked about Ender's Game one time and what we hoped that they'd do with the movie and what we hoped that they didn't do. And part of the beauty of that book is that it starts with him as a little, little kid. You've taken a child, a total innocent, and you've put them into this world, a boot camp kind of thing, that would be hard for a, an 18-year-old to go through, you know what I mean? And they do all that they can to form a a warrior out of this little boy. And by casting a 14-year-old as Ender, some of that I think is gone. But I I could still see traces of that in the stuff that they showed and the stuff that they talked about. The director talked about having to take the book that had all these different themes and ideas in it and choose the ones that that he responded to the most that he wanted to keep and jettison everything else because you can't make a three and a half hour movie of Ender's Game and could make a three month series of Ender's Game though well yeah in fall uh, 2027 we are going to get one of those (laughs) but luckily I'll be dead before no not luckily I want to see that yeah Um, it's funny the stuff that you're talking about with the whole teenager thing and I I, the last time I saw Orson Scott Card talking about you know it It was back when he put out, like, Orson, or Orson's Shadow, Ender's Shadow. (laughs) And he came and he would talk about his uh, adventures in trying to get Ender's Game made into a film. And his insistence on making sure that the story remained the same and Ender not become a teenager. Yeah, he said... Ender stays, and that was He said that they wanted him to be 16 and have a love interest. Yeah. and, And they would make the movie if... If he would let them change that. Yeah, every time that was like the first thing they insisted on. And he's like, oh, okay, well, not you guys. And he, you know, he kept trying to get it, uh, you know, made as the book that he wrote it. And apparently he finally gave up. Maybe he just needs the money. I don't know what the deal is. But uh, I think he even started his own film company in an attempt to get it made the way he wanted it to be. And yeah. And this was the one where they courted Jonathan Frakes to direct it? Probably. Ian used to tell us about that, that he had been in meetings with Orson Scott Card and Jonathan Frakes. Yeah, I think they were called like Mosaic Pictures or something like that or something similar to that. But uh, yeah, it's it's interesting because that, yeah, it finally wound up being what he didn't want it to be. So I guess he just gave up and wanted the money or just wanted to see it as a movie before he died or who knows what maybe just like you know what i've been doing this for 20 years f it you guys just do your damn hollywood thing and you know if as writers that's in the back of your mind always of what would happen if somebody wanted to change this or or take make a movie of it oh neat wouldn't that be cool or tv series and that and you always hear them complain you know the ray bradbury's or the George R. R. Martins or the Anne Rices or, or whoever they might be, Stephen King's, but something that they'll say again and again, it, oh, did I just do that thing? I just did that thing, the Anne Rices and the George R. R. Martins. There's <laughs> one. You did it. Oh. You bastard. This is the worst marathon ever. It is. And you said it's never been done. And the funny thing was I did it like the next show the exact same way that you did it. I named authors and called them as though there were many of them. 
Yeah, well, for the listener, that was just a couple of days ago. For us, it was a long time ago. Um, we've had to split up these recording sessions uh, quite a bit. But something that the writers will always say is that my book is still, it still exists the way that I wrote it. If you don't like the way that they made a, the movie of it or whatever, the book is exactly, not a word has changed in the book. And I don't know if that's empty comfort to somebody, but, I, but it's a valid point. Yeah, it's interesting. I've never heard that before. Even, See, what I would think is if they take this book that you have, and you know, like, Orson Scott Card has written many other books, but Ender's Game is pretty much the best. As far as, it's, this is my opinion, probably, and maybe other people disagree with me, but Ender's Game is like the pinnacle of what he's done. He's done other things that are fine books, but this one is pretty much the number one. It's it's the most commercial, uh, most commercially successful, I should say. It's the one that, you know, has branched off in a gigantic, endless amount of other stories that he can just keep selling and selling. And, you know, this is pretty much the one. If this one gets blown, you know, he's not going back to the movies. And if he does, he's not making a lot out of it. It's just, it's like Stephen King, you know? When you see an ad and it says, well, based on a story by Stephen King, you, you don't get excited about that. Because every story, every movie based on a story by Stephen King has been pretty much crap. And, and to the point where he's got a reputation. If it's based on a story, it's crap. And you don't want that. You know what I mean? I mean, you Stephen King's stories in general, the ones that they made movies of, they're not crap. But the movies that came from them turned out to be. And so... You don't want that to be your reputation because you would like to be able to go back to that well and get more money out of it later by selling another story that you've written. But if people are like, oh, yeah, when well, we saw Ender's Game, and that was shite. I mean, seriously, it would have been really good if, uh, you know, the boy was younger. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to say that. Nobody's well, going to say that. But, yeah, I mean, if, if it's crap, you don't want... And maybe these days that doesn't happen. I mean, I, I bet... I don't know, tell me, in the trailers, did they say, like, based on a story by Orson Scott Carr? They don't put that on no, there, No, right? they don't put that, but they say based on the number one worldwide bestseller or something like that. Okay, I mean, I can see that, but yeah, as long as they don't stick your name on it, you know, whoever the author is, this Divergent girl who wrote that book, if that movie turns out to be crap, you know, I mean, she was, what, like 20... One years old. She's young as She's super hell. young. So you know she's, she's got... She's slightly older than our podcast. She's got like 50 books in her future that she's going to write. Well, and maybe King is like that too. At one point he's just like, oh, that movie sucked and oh, that movie sucked too. But I got 70 more short stories that they can... But yeah, that's the thing. They're not going to want them. You can write as many as you want and you won't be getting money off of them if they all... Okay. If people looked at them and say, boy, that sucks. So you're saying if... Carrie, the very first adaptation of a Stephen King book, had been shite, it might have harmed his film career forever. Right, yeah, they may not have ever come back, and even uh, somebody with a big name already as an author, they make a movie of their book, and they're like, yeah, here is the book, you know, movie based on the bestseller by John Grisham, and then it's just garbage, and everybody hates it. Yeah, they'll be like, yeah, well, he's a good book writer, but he can't make a movie, or something like, you know, and people, I mean, you know how they are in Hollywood. They freaking learn all the wrong lessons. Oh, and that's a good point. And they, they would suck for an author because then that's it. You know, there goes the money train, man. The money train pulled out of the station left you <laughs> there. And you don't get to go back and sell more stories. So it, I guess I can see authors being really protective of their story and wanting it to be the way they wrote it because they know that was a good story and they don't want it effed with until it's not their story anymore but still has their name on it. No, and I totally understand that as a writer and as a creative person. But the difference between me and those other people is nobody's ever said, here's a check with seven zeros in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. That to me, and, and maybe that's what happened with Card, is he's just like, one movie deal for this, and I'm done. I can just write what I want and, and be happy for the rest of my life. I, I don't know. We talk about the amount that people get made, paid, sorry, for things. <laughs> the amount that Robert Downey Jr. got for Iron Man 3 and then he's done. And, you know, it made me disrespect the guy once I found out that much money, you know. It's like, we'll pay you enough to end poverty on Earth. <laughs> 
Uh, and he's like, no, I'm done. I don't want to do it. I don't want to be Tony Stark anymore. Uh, anyhow, I, I think if we could sit down with Card and ask him, we could find out why did you finally allow this movie to get made now? And, and why did you let Gavin Hood do it? Because Gavin Hood's the director and the writer, the screenwriter. But nobody's going to sit down and ask Card that. All they're going to talk about is the politics stuff right now. Yeah. And I don't know if that's even politics, but it's just Card has said some offensive things, some some loud things that didn't need to be loud. You can feel what you feel quietly right. without making a big deal about it. And when I told you that I was at, I was going to go to the Ender's Game panel, uh, I don't know if you told me to ask a question or if I told you. You, I, you said you had sat back and tried to think of the best question to ask. And your question was going to be, what do I say to someone to counteract or you know to get them to come see the movie despite what they've heard? about the original works creator and what he, things he has said because they're gonna hear oh don't go see this guy because he's a bigot don't see this movie because it was written by a bigot and you're supporting bigotry if you see this movie and I mean, that has started already the movie's not out until what October or something like or November and yeah people are already saying boycott don't go see it don't support you know kind of thing don't support anything that any of the actors might be making between now and then and and I, I, of course, it's been blown out of proportion or, or exaggerated or distorted to sell more stories and all that stuff. But I imagine by the time the movie comes out, it's going to be just that's all anybody talks about. No one will be able to, to talk about whether the movie was any good or not because the shadow will be so long of the controversy. <laughs> shadow of the giant in that case then, right? And I was telling the people around me, you know, when the Ender's Game panel starts, I'm going to get up and ask a question. You know, what, what? when should I get up? Should I get up at the beginning of the panel or should I get up when they say, okay, we're going to open it to, up to questions? And they said, ah, just wait until we're going to open it to questions. And when they did, I stood up and the very first person in line asked a question very similar to what I was going to ask. She didn't phrase it the same way I was going to phrase it because I was trying to phrase it in a way where it's not to stir up controversy but just to say I like this subject help me put the best spin on it that I can kind of thing and so the very first question the response um, they said you know we're not going to shy away from the the controversy you know some of the people have told us just don't address it don't say anything because it's just going to make it worse and he said we, we wanted to take the opportunity every chance that somebody brings it up to say that we at Lionsgate Films uh, are all inclusive. We support gay and lesbian or bisexual or transgender and or Martian physiology and, and, and all that stuff. We're, uh, you know, we, we are not discriminatory and we think that the film has a message that is absolutely inclusive and uh, human and accepting and all that and stuff. And, and, and so we're trying to address it and, and say something anytime somebody brings it up to say that, you know, it's not one man that made this movie. It's all of us that made this movie. And this is our perspective, and it's not the same as his. And, and, and people applauded, and I was just like, okay, you know, I don't need to ask my question. That's fine. So you asked about Han Solo then? <sighs> okay, well, yeah, yeah you, you good. See, that's you're being proactive to steer the conversation in a positive way. Harrison Ford was on the panel, and that was the main reason I wanted to go to the Ender's Game panel was I... I, I I like the book, but it wasn't about the book. It was about the movie. But Harrison Ford was going to be there, and so it's like, all right, this will be really cool. Did you tell Harrison Ford that you celebrate his birthday every year? <laughs> no, because he is the <laughs> he kind of guy that doesn't respond to that kind of stuff. <laughs> he was so grouchy and curmudgeonly, I mean, so much so, that I started to think it was a gag, that it was a persona that he was putting on. You know, like... like Paul Rubens being Pee Wee Herman or whatever that guy's name is being Andrew Dice Clay. You know, those guys weren't really that guy, but that was something that they would do. And he makes it look like it's torture to be there. And he's like, yeah, I, I came to Comic-Con one time before and I and I appreciate the people that support our, our projects, but uh, and then, you know, the whole time he's just like but I'd rather you get off my lawn kind of thing. And the last time he came to Comic-Con, it was in handcuffs. So he's getting better, though, right? I mean, they didn't have to bring him in under armed guard or anything. 
No. And uh, Chris Hardwick was the moderator in this one. And Chris Hardwick... The nerdist? Is the nerdist. And I, I told you last year that I was really impressed with this guy. And I've sort of followed him ever since. And I've read his uh, his blog a couple of times. And uh, yeah, I saw him do three panels this weekend. And yeah, I think he's a, a really cool guy. And I would like to be him because knee deep, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but the second that they opened it up to questions, uh, except for that first one about the author, it was all questions for Harrison Ford, and it stopped being about the movie. And it became all about, you're my favorite actor, and this is cool to see you, and I like this, and I like that. And I could see how uncomfortable he was being or, or, or pretended to be. I don't know which it is. But he would sort of mumble an answer. I was like, well, yeah, I, I, I kind of like that. And somebody's like, well, you know, I, all, I love you in, in this, and I loved you in this, and loved you in Blade Runner. And they want the audience to clap for every single one of those that's movies that they mention. And it's like, what, brought, what uh, drew you to this project? And he finally got to answer a question, and, and he talked about the book and how ahead of its time it was, and that it talked about drone warfare before there was such a thing as you know and soldiers that don't actually have to participate in the the battle and the 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 morality of using children as as soldiers and stuff like that and i was like oh okay well this was a good answer and then immediately somebody said you know hey you know it's just what what was it like to be han solo i was like kind of thing (laughs) and I, there were a couple of those geeky questions, and then the the straw that broke the camel's back was somebody got up and they said, "If Indiana Jones and Han Solo met in a bar, what?" And and he goes, "Oh!" <laughs> he made this awful noise, and he just rolls his eyes and he looks at the ground like, "Don't ask me this shit." And Chris Hardwick says, "Mr. Ford doesn't want to ask, answer this question." But, you know, I kind of want to know the answer, too. What would they say to each other if, if Han Solo and Indiana Jones met? And Harrison says, I am never coming here again. <laughs> and it was, everybody laughed and clapped, but I couldn't tell if he was joking or not. <laughs> and they said, well, no, I'll just answer the question. And he says, I don't know. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. And then everybody clapped. <laughs> and it was just a really embarrassing, stupid question. And we got a, a, a an answer just as... Embarrassing and stupid. Uh, yeah. I don't know. The, the, the thing was, nobody's going to make the movie I want to see, Avengers Game, because it's, it's too difficult to start with a five-year-old yeah. and build it for years up in in for something like that to happen it would have to be perhaps a animated film or something like that where you can you can make somebody grow through animation uh you know it'd be one of those cg 3d films or something oh it was a hawk about to dive bomb us did you hear that thing i did hear it i hope that the listener Oh, he's gone. There's no one listening. <laughs> but hear. yeah, I think that's the one way probably that you could get a film that's s- something like what... But then it still isn't going to be what you want because you don't want it to be a th- CG film, a 3D film. Sorry, a animated film. Those are fireworks. That can't be a bird making that noise. It, that was too weird. It does sound like a it would have to hawk, be though. Maybe it's scared of an the An 18-foot long falcon to make that noise <laughs> they, they showed us stuff and there was nothing in the footage that I saw that was not in the book there were times where I was trying to figure out what it was but like there was a moment where it was him and his sister on a raft on a lake and I was like oh I know what that is you know what I mean and there was a scene where some people were talking about him um, and he has a defender that's talking to, to Graf who's played by Harrison Ford that says, you know, the stuff that you're doing to him, it's burning him out, you know. It's like, when this is all over, what will be left of him? And Harrison Ford says, if they come back, what will be left of us? You know, in that way that he, where he points the <laughs> finger, uh, that just, it, it broaches no argument. It's like, his, once he points the finger, it's done. And they there was no kissing or any of that stuff in the trailer, but they certainly could have Petra... Arcanian be the love interest 
she was on the panel as well. And here's a question for you to to ruin Ender's Game for you forever. At the end of the book, Graf is no longer the head of the battle school. What does he go on to be the head of? I don't know the, the Imperial Fleet or something. The National Football League. What the hell is that? Boom. <laughs> You'll never like that book again, now, huh? No, I can't. I, 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 if I, if I support that book, then I support the National Football That's League right. and homophobia. The, uh, the, 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 the proof will be in the pudding. We'll see in November whether anybody can watch the movie p- apart from the background stuff. I, we've talked about it with John Carter. Nobody gave a crap about whether the movie was any good. All anybody talked about was how much it cost. And and with the Lone Ranger, there was a lot of people talking about what it cost. Oh wow, the moon is coming out and it's so glorious. Yeah, it's slowly rising over the mountains. That's pretty awesome. Um, okay, well, th- th- I, I I guess we'll do an episode about Ender's Game when it comes out, right? Yeah, we will. We'll go and see it and we'll talk about it and talk about whatever else goes along with it. <laughs> and uh, one last tiny thing. You know, all the marketing, and you'll see more of that once you guys start seeing the trailers and the stuff that I saw at Comic-Con, they make no attempt to hide something. They make no, there's no obfuscation about what's going on in in the movie. And that's too bad, because that's my favorite part about the book. And I guess that's a valid angle in which to proceed. I just wish that they had chosen to do it a different way. If at the Captain America panel... Somebody asked about the Winter Soldier's identity, and he said, yeah, we're not going to hide that at all. Just from the very beginning, you're going to know who Winter Soldier is. The, the fun is that Cap doesn't know. And, and again, that's a valid point. If Ender doesn't know, but the audience knows, I guess you can address it that way. I just, oh, I'd love for them to try to not let the audience in on it. Yeah, that would be cool. That is that big thing. Although, yeah, I was telling you that I had a friend who just read the book for the first time just the other day, and he was saying that he he guessed that just basically because there was only so many pages left in the book, so he assumed this stuff must be real. And I guess that's a valid point, but not necessarily, because we know there's several other books in the series, so, you know, he doesn't have to win the war by the end of the book. Yeah, if I could have been there and asked more than that first question, I would have liked to have asked, what if this is tremendously successful? Was there any thought in the back of your mind of, oh, uh, doing a sequel to this or doing, you know... I mean, they can't do Speaker for the Dead. That's unadaptable. But there was a book that took place afterwards that came out later, and there was the awful bean stuff that went on and on and on and on and on. Well, the sun has completely gone down. The, the moon has completely risen. So and The sun has also completely gone down. It ha- It's kind of a coincidence, don't you think? Yeah, a little bit. So let's leave this for today and we'll come back tomorrow with another really bad, unprofessional episode of That Gets My Goat. You might even say this is the worst marathon ever. Oh, I, I don't know if I'd go that... Worst marathon ever. Okay, with an H? Yeah. Okay. Wait, you know what? It needs, it, at least it's not... What was that? I don't know. <laughs> at least it's not the worst marathon ever with an A instead of an E and oh. many R's. See, that would really, really suck. I that would I would not want to do an episode after that. <laughs> if we ever got into the ever territory. All right. Thanks for listening, folks. We'll see you next time. Good night. Edit out the F word. Please. That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons okay. 3.0 license. Uh, fudge? Kids on the roof. Yeah. Huh. Maybe we should call the police on Yeah, he looked to be screwing around. Nobody that moves like that is up to any good. Did you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, uh, I think let's. They were let's... running to avoid our sight. Oh, that's what it was. Quiet, and then we would have never heard them. Ah, okay.